Prior to becoming an instrumental solo artist, which I thought was an impossible thing, uh, I was in a vocal group and I sang uh, co-lead vocals. I wasn't very good, limited range. I don't really have the tone quality of a lead vocalist, but I, I did have one in the band I was in and he had a beautiful voice and we had kind of an unusual blend. When we switched into thinking that uh, I needed a band to support Surfing with the Alien, um, I just felt, well, this is really weird. First of all, performing instrumentals, I'd never done it before. Didn't know if I should jump around like I used to in my rock bands, or should I stand still and look really serious to add to the seriousness of the music or, you know. That first couple of weeks was so funny because the three of us, uh, Stu Ham, Jonathan, Mover, and myself, we just didn't know what to do physically. We knew how to play the music, but, you know. Did you ever think of adding a vocalist to your band? Or it didn't fit. Really it would never fit to have somebody else with another idea, you know. And just the practicality of it, when you have, you're gonna play 20 songs and you say, you're gonna sing on three of them and then go sit down over there. And <laughs> just doesn't work, you know? So um, I was just thinking after the first tour, I mean, the first tour was very limited because uh, I was playing with Mick Jagger that year in 88. And then um, I was playing with Mick Jagger and I got to stand next to this amazing vocalist every night and I watched what he did and I was just in his penumbra, you know what I mean? In his just amazing shadow on these huge stages. And I, and I was just thinking, there is something there for me to understand about performing for people. Cause he was just a 100% a totally dedicated performer. He just wanted everyone to be happy and he would do anything to make it happen. And so when I got back on tour, I thought, you know, that's what we're missing is some sort of connection to the audience, but we were, in between doing clubs and small theaters. And so it was, again, it was this new thing of like playing at a place like this, you still have to play to those people up there. You know, there's an old showbiz adage, play to the back of the house, you know, it's an important thing just to remind you not to look at the people who can look you in the eyes, but to, to reach everybody and you have to learn to project somehow. It's a muscle inside that you, you can't flex unless you really have to, you know, you, you force yourself to do it. Uh, and what I found was that if I sang anything, it kind of humanized and uh, made less serious the whole rock fusion instrumental expectation. If I came out as I'm just Joe from Long Island and yeah, I can sing a couple of songs that we all know and it might make it more fun. And the bonus was is that if I, did have a song where there were vocals, it was an opportunity to play a different kind of guitar. And, and that was also a big revelation as well because I'd spent my entire life playing guitar in rock bands with vocals. And I had all this stuff I could play for people. But once I started doing instrumentals, I couldn't play that stuff. It didn't make any sense. I had to channel different kinds of uh, technique. Uh, but when I got to do Big Bad Moon or Strange, I could play an entirely different kind of guitar. And the arrangements could be different because there were vocals. I didn't have to be so expressive with the tone of the guitar because I had lyrics. I let people know right from the start what the song was about. You know, so. But it's nerve wracking because <laughs> I still can't sing. <laughs>